Hello, my church family. I hope you're having a blessed evening. I hope you're staying warm and I hope you're staying dry. Um, it's rainy and icy and cold winter night. It reminds me of probably the worst night or one of the worst nights there is to travel. And that's why um, when I thought about and prayed about today's scripture readings and this time that we're going to spend together, my mind and my heart was turned to uh, the 1987 movie Planes, Trains, and Automobiles with John Carey, uh, John Candy, and Steve Martin. And I, I, that movie, uh, while it was humorous and sarcastic and, you know, all over the place in its um, demonstration of the difficulties of traveling during the holiday season, it was Steve Martin who I absolutely um, kind of connected with. He was totally stressed out. He was totally just trying to get home. And everything humanly possible was keeping him from that. His whole life, if he was wrapped up in the destination. And so often that is exactly what we do all the time. We're all just trying to get home. Home at 3.30, 4.30, 5 o'clock at night in the hustle and bustle of traffic trying to arrive home for our loved ones who await for us, our children anxious to see us, um, the dinner that needs to be cooked, the laundry that needs to be uh, completed, um, the work that didn't get finished during the hours of the office. All those things are waiting for us as we're trying to get home. In today's uh, scripture reading, uh, I'm going to start with the gospel. And the gospel reading today comes from the gospel of St. Mark. And so in this gospel reading, we hear the story about Jesus sending out the disciples. And so the early disciples are going out to make more disciples. And so hear these words and just kind of listen in. So uh, uh, this is chapter 6 in Mark, verses 7 to 13. Jesus summoned the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. He instructed them to take nothing for the journey but a walking stick. No food, no sack, no money in their belts. They were, however, to wear sandals, but not a second tunic. And he said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave from that location. And so I just want to stop there. And I want you to understand what Jesus is saying. Jesus is saying to them that they're going to travel to towns and villages throughout um, the Galilee region, throughout first century Palestine. And he's telling them very specifically not to bring additional clothes. Don't bring anything that could be considered in modern times as uh, camping gear. I don't want you to live off the land. I want you to live in relationship to the people that you visit. In other words, I, you know, Jesus is saying to them that I want you to engage the people in those neighborhoods. And then it'd be easy for us to say, well, yeah, they're out there making disciples. You can't make disciples by sitting by the side of the road. But more importantly, what he's trying to say to them is that in um, our life in this Christian faith, our life in Christ, we have to be honest and be willing to allow ourselves to be humble. We have to allow ourselves to, in, in, in a sense, um, be cared for and nurtured by somebody else. We have, to, we have to live off the charity, if you will, at times, of other people. It's not taking anything for free. The charity that I'm trying to describe here is the kindness and us giving them something, and, um, a disciple or an apostle, giving them the message of Christ. And by giving them the message of Christ, the, the acceptor is transformed, and the acceptor says, come, stay under my roof. But this is hard. You know, we live in a time, you know, put aside first century Palestine, we live in a time of, we want to be independent. We don't want to rely on somebody else to take care of us. We don't want to be the never-ending house guest. We want to show and prove to everyone that we got this. We want to show and prove to everyone that uh, we, we are the one in control of our lives, in control of the situation, in control of destiny. 
So Jesus says very clearly, well, Mark tells us that Jesus says very clearly that the divine experience is not about your independence. It's not about your destiny. It's not about controlling the situation. The divine experience is about interdependence, relying on other people, being unclear and unsure of the destiny, but holding true that the journey is part and parcel to going home. Now, Steve Martin's character in Planes, Trains, and Automobiles just didn't see that. And John Candy's did. Because there wasn't someone or something waiting for him that, uh, at home. Instead, it was a part of getting there as a part of interacting with all the other people on the journey that isn't of itself home. Every day when we get into the car, and I would travel on Interstate 80 for, for years um, commuting, in traffic, uh, don't make any eye contact with anybody. You know, don't let anybody cut in front of you. Don't cut in front of anybody else. Really, truly uh, be a road warrior for my own independence. And the, the thing was that on all, in all those times and in all those years, I let slip away opportunities to be in community. I missed opportunities to smile at my fellow drivers. I missed opportunities to show them dignity and respect, letting them, you know, change a lane in front of me. Out of goodness, out of wholeness, out of wholesomeness, out of holiness. And that, that's the, the most important part of the journey. Now, I think that for a time now, we have been absent from the ability to, to travel. We haven't been using planes and trains. Maybe we have used a few automobiles, but in their great singularity and aloneness. And that, that has harmed us. And so I invite you this day to be thoughtful and prayerful about our destination. The destination of every single human being on this planet. And that destination is home. That's a destination uh, to eternal life. That's a destination that says that they are welcome someplace and comforted someplace. And that this journey... It's ever unfolding. It's going to a sense of unity. Everybody wants to have the best possible life. They want to have a rich and meaningful experience with somebody else, with God. They want to be in that relationship. And John Candy saw that and Steve Martin didn't. And I need to see that every single day. Because it's important to me to know that, that experience of the journey of the planes, trains, and automobiles allows me to be at home the entire time. Mark continues, he says that Jesus said to them, whatever place does not welcome you or listen to you, leave there and shake the dust off your feet in testimony against it. So he's trying to say to them that there's going to be people that are absolutely going to turn their back on community. And he says, that's okay. I'm going to upset with them. You'll have another turn. You'll have another chance. But shake the dust off. Do not let it weigh you down. Do not let someone's singularity to some kind of goal and objective that they think is going on that's far more important than being in relationship and love and care. Be the thing that, um, that distracts you, that dissuades you, that sends you off in a tailspin. Embrace the warm experience of being humble, being the ultimate house guest, being uh, the person that nobody wants to leave because you're so much fun to be with. In the uh, first reading today, it's in... Um, the book of um, the first book of Kings. We hear the story about King David, and um, David is on his deathbed, and he's trying to uh, give to Solomon advice. And we know all about Solomon, Solomon's wisdom and stuff like that. And he says to him, "I'm going the way of the flesh. I'm going to die." He says, "Be take courage, 
uh, in being a man, right? I'm talking about chapter two, verses one through four. Take courage in being a man. And, and so I don't think he's talking about a macho thing. I think he's talking about the bravery to stand in relationship with God. So often we hear in um, Hebrew scripture, and some, which is sometimes referred to as the Old Testament, about fearing God. And I think that that's not the kind of fear, like a, a terror, terrorized by God. You see, I think that the, what they're trying to describe is, is that, you know, we're so afraid of other people. We don't, want to, we don't want anyone to dislike us, kind of, right? We want everyone to give us a thumbs up and to like us and to want to be our friends and to want to, you know, be a part of who we are. And, and David's saying that that's not the, that's not the way to go. He's, he's saying that, you know, the, the person that you want to be in ultimate relationship with is God. And by being in ultimate relationship with God, in fulfilling God's promise to the world to love, to trust, to be one singular family. That message is what brings us home. That message is what says to us every single time that God loves us with such great abundance and care and that we're invited to love each other in that way. And by doing that, that you know, we pass that wisdom on in those last breaths, as David describes, that we don't wait for that end result, that we try to pass that on and live that out to our children and our children's children. Because it's in that space, it's in that time that we find out that the journey home is where we already are. Today, I ask you um, with great prayer, to see where you are in this journey of life with Christ. See where you are and know that you are home in the beloved arms and the hearts and the prayers of your fellow siblings in Christ. See that you are home with all of humanity, sharing uh, so much of, of, of the very makeup, uh, the biological makeup, the physical, the emotional, the, the, the desires, the needs, the visions for a better world. And whether you take a plane, or a train, or an automobile, the journey is part of the ultimate destination. To be disciples for Jesus Christ, to transform the world, to be ever-present of the now and always kingdom of heaven. So travel, my friends, with great safety and great care. Know that God loves you, and so do I. And go in peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.